Howdy fellow hyperspinners, Avar here, welcoming you to another tutorially awesome episode of AV Archivist. Today we're talking themes and how to convert them to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Specifically today I'm going to explain how to deal with themes that have very simple backgrounds like a monochromatic palette or geometric pattern. The reason for this is simply because more complex themes require more complex approaches. So today we're going to go over the basics of how we do it and in subsequent tutorials I'll give you tips as to how to handle different types of themes. Whether they include animated flash movies or exceptionally complex screen wide artwork or backgrounds. Now, let's start with the basics and build a solid foundation of sweet juicy knowledge. In the description below you'll find that I've outlined or linked you to the tools that we'll need for today's tutorial. These are, at a minimum, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Flash Pro, HyperTheme, and Dark 13's JSFL resizing smoothing scripts. So make sure you've got all those programs set up and extract Dark 13 scripts to a sensible location like a utilities folder in your Hyperspin directory. For our demonstration today, we're going to use the game Boxer, which is from the Arcade Classics and MAME collection. Right off the bat, you can see this is a very simple theme, very basic, and in fact, we don't even need to touch the background at all. It's plain white, perfect the way it is. You can also quickly identify the elements that are being stretched. For example, the Boxer's heads look like eggs, the video is much wider than it should be, and the Atari symbol is also much wider. In order to optimize this for a widescreen display, the first thing we need to do is to go into the system's Hyperspin Media directory and extract all the themes we want to work on into their own folders. Go into the boxer folder and assess the elements. Once again we can see that this is a very simple theme with four individual pieces of artwork that require resizing but no other tinkering beyond that. Navigate to the scripts you extracted earlier and run the one labeled 43 to 169 conversion. This will open Flash Pro where you must select run as command and navigate to the folder of the theme you're working on. If you plan on resizing multiple themes, it's a good idea to create a shortcut to the theme folder for the system you're working on, or to work directly off your desktop, depending on which version of Flash Pro you're using. Once you select the folder, the script will automatically resize its ping files, convert them to Swift files, and apply in smoothing to improve their quality in widescreen application. Head back over to the theme folder and open info.txt. Amend it with your name or handle, and ideally, you'd also want to include the date of conversion. Do not remove the original artist's information. The only reason we're doing this is for archiving purposes and also so people know who to talk to if there are any issues with the conversion. Next, open theme.xml. Make sure force aspect is set to both and reduce the width to 75% of its currently set value. Now, control select the info and theme files as well as all of the newly resized elements. In this case, remember to select the original background ping because it didn't need resizing. If working on themes in bulk, it doesn't hurt to set WinRAR's default archive format to zip and compression method to store to save time. At this point, we want to move the original themes files to a backup folder and replace its zip with the resized one we've just created. Quality control time now, so boot up Hyperspin and scroll to the theme to see how it looks. Nine times out of ten, the elements of the theme are going to be displaced as they are here, but no matter what, the theme's going to look better if you re-optimize the space. So now we'll open HyperTheme and click on the magnifying lens in the top right corner to bring up our theme for repositioning. In order for video to be included in the output file, you need to click on the video icon, select Add, and then choose any FLV video. The specific FLV video doesn't matter, it just has to be FLV, and in case you can't find one, I've included one in the description below. It's just because if you don't do this, HyperTheme doesn't know to output the video parameters when you save the file. All that's left to do now is to reposition all of the elements to optimize the aesthetic. When you're done making changes, hit the save icon and when it asks if you want a quick save, say yes. Whenever you make changes, just alt tab over and check out how it looks in hyperspin. You're probably going to have to go back and forth a few times to make sure it looks just right. I also recommend you keep conversion notes. While it's less important for very simple themes like this, it can be useful when dealing with more complex themes in the future. And to be honest, it's just good practice. Time to check out the finished product and review what we've learned today. By using Dark 13's conversion scripts and an effective methodology, we've applied the theory I discussed in my first tutorial in order to resize a simple theme. If you ever work with a theme that contains a video.png border file, please be aware that you must manually resize video.png, as Hyperspin will not recognize borders in the SWF format. Also keep in mind that though some themes may at first glance appear to have complex backgrounds or artwork, you might still be able to apply this method. It's up to you to determine whether or not being stretched degrades its quality in a noticeable way. If you're ever unsure, feel free to contact me via the comment section, or you can hit up the Hyperspin Artwork community for advice. As mentioned earlier, more complex themes require different resizing methods, and I'll be covering each method one by one in subsequent tutorially awesome episodes. The difficulty in handling complex themes ranges from the fairly easy to the Bob Ross-esque. So be sure to stop by again. 
is my way of saying thanks for watching. I've included a link in the description that will provide you with a fully converted and smooth set of themes for the AAE XML. I hope you enjoy them. And remember, every time you like, share, or subscribe to AV Archivist, the Force is with you.